Hello and welcome to the solid phase peptide synthesis series made by Dr. Naomi Lee's research group at Northern Arizona University. In this video, we will be going over lesson 1. If you are new to the Lee lab or have minimal biology and chemistry knowledge, this lesson will serve as a foundation for learning about peptide synthesis. In this lesson, we will cover what proteins, peptides, and amino acids are, the structures that proteins and peptides can form, and why we use peptides in our research. Let's get into it. What do you think of when you hear the word proteins? You probably think of food associated with having lots of proteins such as meat, nuts, and eggs. While these foods do contain lots of protein for our diet, in biochemistry, proteins are actually microscopic complex molecules that perform various functions in our bodies and in the world around us. Proteins can be involved in transporting essential molecules around the body, act as antibodies in our immune systems, and help our muscles move just to name a few functions. With the power of computer programs, we can model what proteins actually look like which makes for some pretty cool structures. Hemoglobin, shown on the left, is a protein that is found in our blood. Collagen, in the center, is a protein that is found all over our bodies, including in skin, bones, and muscles. The SARS-CoV-2 virus, pictured on the right, is covered in distinct spike proteins. So how are proteins related to peptides? Proteins are actually made up of peptides. Just like a house is made of many bricks, proteins are made by many peptides bound together to make a larger structure. In biology we use the terms monomer and polymer to talk about this relationship where monomers bind together to form polymers. So what is a peptide? A peptide is a chain of amino acids linked together by chemical bonds. You can think of a peptide being like a necklace made up of amino acids which are like beads being strung together. Therefore, amino acids are the monomers of proteins. Let's look closer at amino acids. Each amino acid has four main parts to it, the amino group shown in blue, the carboxylic acid shown in red, the alpha carbon shown in gray bound to a hydrogen, and lastly the R group shown in purple. The R group you see here is actually just a placeholder for different chemical structures that can fill this space. The R group is what makes amino acids different. As you can see on the right, phenylalanine, leucine, serine, and cysteine are all bound together in a peptide chain. Each of these amino acids have unique R groups, also known as side chains. There are 20 naturally occurring amino acids with distinct side chains. We'll be going over those in more detail in the next video. So let's recap. Peptides are made up of 2 to 50 amino acids linked together and proteins are made of multiple peptide chains, making proteins contain 50 plus amino acids. Amino acids have different properties that can cause the larger proteins and peptides to create interesting shapes. Let's go back to our bead analogy. In the top left we can see our original analogy of a chain of amino acids making up the peptide. This simple chain is known as the primary structure and it's about as simple as it gets. Peptides can go on to form a spiral structure, a sheet, or a random coil, depending on the amino acid composition. These are known as secondary structures. The protein primary and secondary structures in the bottom left are the same as the peptide structures. The tertiary structure is made of multiple peptide sheets or spirals and the quaternary structure is multiple of these tertiary structures, working as one unit. As we wrap up this lesson, let's talk about why we make and use peptides in our research. Primarily, peptides are very customizable. We can pick and choose each amino acid in the chain to make peptides have certain properties. This is related to our second point in how we can make peptides that form unique structures that are robust and sturdy in various conditions. We can use these structures as platforms to attach important molecules in order to create vaccines. Lastly, peptides can act as chemical tethers. In several of our projects you will see peptides acting as a link between two other structures. Because we can edit the length and composition of these peptides, they are very good tethers in our projects. That concludes lesson 1. Today we covered proteins, peptides, and amino acids and how they relate to each other. 
the different structures these molecules can make, and why we are interested in peptides in our lab. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next lesson.